Okay. So. Oh, folks, okay. Adequate notice of this September the 11th meeting has been provided in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act by posting written notice and agenda of this meeting on the bulletin board in the municipal building 1000 Route 10 Township of Hanover and by hand delivering, mailing, or faxing such notice and agenda to the following newspapers. Morris County's Daily Record, the Star Ledger, Hanover Eagle, and by filing same with the Township Clerk. I have a roll call. Sir. On roll call, Committee Man Gallagher. Here. Committee Man Faramosca. Here. Committee Man Bruno is excused. He's away on business. Committee Man Coppola. Here. And Mayor Francioli. Here. Five members in attendance, sir. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please rise those that can and join me in a pledge of allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Isn't it nice that we can continue to say that? Okay. All right. You don't want to open to the public show before? Or what? Hmm? I think so. Yeah, I think so, too. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I mean, it, it does not go unnoticed that this is the 13th anniversary of the most horrific attack on the United States, within the United States, that I think uh, we have ever seen. Uh, loss of thousands of lives, both here in New York City, right here in our own hometown, many of the towns around us, loss of lives in Pennsylvania, loss of lives at the Pentagon, with personnel, at the hands of fanatical groups uh, of uh, terrorists, etc. Uh, we've overcome it physically. We have never overcome it emotionally. We've rebuilt, we've reconstructed, we stood back up again to say that we are here. But the pain that we feel every time uh, we look at that portion of uh, Lower Manhattan will always be there. And the pain for the lives of the families that have lost loved ones, children who are born without ever have seen their father and have grown without ever seeing their parents, mother or father. Uh, just a terrible situation. Uh, but uh, we Americans prevail, we will prevail, and we will prevail under the current threats here in the, uh, in the world, as difficult as it is. Um, I'd like you to join with me in one moment of silence and thought of all that we've lost at that time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Gentlemen, at this time, I'd like a motion from the committee to move the so public. Second. Move the second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, once again, the floor, the floor will be open later, but the floor is open now. If anyone would like to address the township committee, they can do so from the podium, giving us your name and address for the record, please. Uh, Robert Steiger, 13 Quarter Place, Cedar Knolls, New Jersey. Mayor, member of the committee, a uh, couple of pleasant things. First, uh, it shows I can be pleasant. I try to. I really do. Uh, I want to thank the mayor for the seniors for uh, coming out to our meeting last week. It, w it was well received. It really was, especially the part about the no tax increase. They absolutely loved it. They really and truly well, I did. I thank you for the invitation. Right. Really and we want to thank, we took a trip to seniors, went to uh, Point Pleasant today had a wonderful day on a bus trip paid for by you gentlemen. We've paid for some of the way, but the buses were paid for by you. And I also understand that you increased our bus rates from 5,000 to 7,000 this year, and we are very much appreciative of that. We really are. And I have a couple of items, and it's a couple of things in Cedar Knolls that have me bothered. There's a house in Cedar Knolls that has a new, I guess it's a new designer's touch, plywood windows. Is there anything we can do about that house that has the plywood on the windows? I, every time I go by, I want to go home and paint those son of a guns. Isn't there anything that's a violation you, you're there? You're talking on Laurel? Uh, which one are you talking about now? Uh, specifically, for, uh, uh, where are you, Bob, with that, with that house? I'm sorry. Uh, which the ad, which the, the location? Uh, it's the one right across from Pronto, next to Long's Travel. 
Oh, oh, oh. It's the one where you had some people in there at one time, but it's, it's had plywood on the window. Isn't that any type of a maintenance violation? You know, uh, you, you, it begs a good question uh, <coughs> on, uh, on that, Jerry, on uh, pl plywood covering the windows. In, in it's the, just plywood covering the windows. Do we have any red zone uh, regs? We have we? to check with the with, uh, building. with building on that. I'm Sean. not sure. Yeah, with Sean Donald. Uh, we'll get with Sean and, and check on it and find out. What, we'll get with down L.D. Simone on property maintenance and uh -huh. see what we can do, you know, regarding that. Well, I'm not sure how anybody could drive by it and not notice it. I really you know. mean. And the other thing is I'd like to discuss the Cedar Knolls Exxon Auto Museum. There's more cars there than NASCAR. When Frankie Schneider owned that, he was allowed three cars in the yard overnight, none on the weekends. If there isn't 12 cars in there, what, how the hell is he getting away with it? Yeah. He have, is, uh, have any of you driven by it? Oh yeah, today yeah. I went there. You're absolutely right. They're parked almost out to the sidewalk. But how, why is it not being challenged? It is He's, being challenged, he, Bob. Huh? It is being challenged. I spoke with Sean on several occasions. Uh, I myself, like John, I went by it. Very difficult to make a turn going out of that street right. because of the cars. And he is actually going there to see what's going on. Okay, but so I just want to tell you, it's been like that for I almost a has. year. I know it has. And he said they've been there before, and they've advised them of what they had to do. They don't comply. They're going to start getting a... Uh, fine for what they're doing. Yeah, I mean, I, me, I, it looks like a used car I imagine the new owner is probably hard to find. He's probably in Dubai someplace because it, it's crazy what's going on there. It really is. Well, obviously uh, the cars have no plates on them and it, they it's, got numbers on them. It's so ridiculous. It's a car lot to some sort. Well, he, 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 might, he might have to come back into the planning board for uh, another application on that because he has to have designated parking areas on the site, as we know. <laughs> But he's gone, you know, we knew, we knew Frank, we knew Schneider, we knew what was going on there. And he's converted, this new owner seems to be converted to a lot more in the mechanical area or, or repairs or something. And is just running rampant on that site. But, it, uh, it is the center of town, and it, it is a shame that it's the way it is. Yeah. It if, really uh, is. As George says, I mean, it's in, Sean is looking into it right now, but if we can't get compliance through the buildings department, then we'll force him back into the planning board for an application before the planning board on, on another site plan. He's probably going to go to the Board of Adjustment for a second floor parking lot. Well, you know, lot. it may be because it's going to be redefining his use. Is he a gasoline station to pump gas, or is he a repair shop, you know? Uh, I guess the next is a little more complicated, and, and it's something that I, I feel very, very strongly about. It's the Esposito case that took place. I sat through all seven hours of that case. I, 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 I'm going to go through some stuff. Please don't be offended if I say something that bothers you. But 99% of the people in this town do not even know where that site is. I'm very serious when I say that. I know there's some people close by that do, but the residents of this town, and that's why you had rumors flying about uh, people, what was going to be built there and whatnot. But the rumor wasn't that the township was going to develop it. The rumor was that contractors were going to try to go in and get the land and develop it. And part of that came from the fact that when Slattery Drive was built, the, old, the fellow that developed that asked her if she would sell her property to him. So th and this, this is stuff that comes out. These are rumors that get around, and the people feel sorry for it because of the stand and whatnot. Okay, uh, th the other thing that, uh, that has me, got me a little bit upset was that, and I'm not... Please don't get upset, but your letter that came out, Ron, you, 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 you basically found her guilty before the court had a plant chance. Well, now stop there, Bob. Okay, no. These stop commercial there, Bob, uses... Stop Let me tell you something, because I've heard more and more about my letter and other letters, okay? Right. The letter that was written by the Township Committee for the Township Committee, right. only addressed the farm stand and the fact that we were not closing the farm stand. It was not our intention. She's grandfathered, and it would remain. All we heard in the community, all we heard in this community, was that the Township was going to close the stand and was going to put Mary out and put all of these businesses out 
that was so far from the truth, and that was being put out by people other than this township committee, all right? Okay. Was what, were you what were you referring yeah, to I, with I, this, I, with I, this I, sentence? You, you what were you referring to? You've got to forgive me for getting a little upset. Of, of, of course, I don't it. blame you. I don't blame you. Not, I would, too, if I was sitting there. That letter did not cross the line. A subsequent letter crossed the line. Okay. What did you mean with this, with these, this sentence? These commercial uses are not permitted in the residential zone. The owners have no township removal for such multiple uses or to store equipment. What piece of property were you talking about with that sentence? Mayor? It's, it was May, May, uh, Mr. Steiger, I, I just want to tell you that that letter was sent by the mayor, but it was sent in response to numerous statements that were made that were not accurate and I reviewed that letter as legal counsel so <clears throat> there was no rush to judgment it was crafted in a way that it would be with hole. information and I'm the one who signed off on that letter after the mayor wrote it and, and I don't that's, believe that's your opinion I accept I, I your just opinion want you to know and I disagree and, with and you I, I'm of the opinion that it just set forth facts so that the residents would be aware of what's going on in the matter the matter was ultimately decided by the judge and the court. But the statements that even the ones you read, they're just statements of fact that even were found by the court. Mm -hmm. They're fact from the administration and from various departments. That's all it is. So, and, and, I, and, and but then down below it says, important for residents to understand what was going on. Yes. If you but don't agree with it, it really isn't relevant to the standpoint that that was information that was dis disseminated for the benefit of the residents. If you don't agree, there's no sense for us to debate it because it's not just... Well, I plan to debate that's it. That's okay, but, but I'm just telling you it's more important that the residents well, Bob, go on, go on. got information. You, you, whatever time right. you have. Okay. Then there's a sentence down below that is very clear. Deci the decision on this rests with the court that will interpret the zoning code and reach a determination in the next few weeks. Yeah. You've said they're guilty up top, and then you say the court is going to reach a decision. How do I say they're guilty? What, what you say, it, th these commercial uses are not permitted in a residential that's a zone. That's statement of fact, Bob. That's not condemning them or not. I don't know what the, if, if the, the court's... The, but then how are they... If you say you've been the mayor, you've been on planning for all these years, if you say it's not permitted, how the hell is some Somebody else going to say it is permitted. The, the letter was appropriate and correct. If you're looking for an issue, continue to find an issue. All right, but that's not the one. Damn it. Okay, but let's go on further. Then uh, it, you, you, it, it gets very complicated. It's almost like David versus Goliath. And I'm serious. I sat here. I, I watched this woman with her attorney going against the township, going at her we like... We worked for two years with Mrs. Esposito, with Miss Richards, to try and get this thing rectified, Bob. Two years. You were not here for two years when we were going through trying to settle this. Every arrangement that we tried to make with her was refused up until this point. Then finally, we would be guilty of malfeasance if the, planning, if the buildings department didn't take the necessary action that it took. Not us... Not the township committee, the zoning department. You should know that, too. And I, wa I watched the zoning department in action. The, the, her attorney had to def spend hours defending pictures that were presented by your zoning department that had nothing to do with the site whatsoever. They took, had pictures of electric, uh, uh, telephone trucks in there doing work and weren't there the next day. That's like if you have come to your house and do work, and they take a picture of the truck in your yard, and they say you're storing a vehicle. If the case was so open and closed, why did she have to f issue so many phony pictures? I was here, Ron. I don't know, if, I don't know that anybody else was. I sat no, through we all... We deliberately were not there. I've, well, maybe that's possible. Maybe you should have been, because you'd have seen, no, we you'd have seen have something in action no, that wasn't been. very pleasant. No, and that was, that was for Judge O'Toole to interpret. Whatever the photos were, etc. I have no knowledge right. of those. But and her attorney successfully, and O'Toole uh, 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 told him how wonderful a job he did, because he, found he was able to prove that so many of them had nothing to do with the well, site. I'll take another moment and please submit. Okay, I will. Let's, I'll, get, I'll get to the end. I'll be honest with you. Her close to a hundred thousand dollars because of some, because of some now, garbage now and, and, and storage and in closing the case was controversial the judge was fair but once the committee found she was wrong and made it public the judge could not call them a liar and I believe that anyone else like to be heard at this time Miserati <clears throat> 
Judy Arati, um, 43 Locust Drive, Morris Plains, <coughs> which is in Hanover Township. Um, yeah, I, um, it's a, just a very s tragic case um, of a long time resident in town. And um, I would hope, I don't know if it's possible, but I would hope that maybe the township committee and or the justice system could do something to help this person um, so she is not saddled with such a huge amount of fines and, and, and such. I mean, so if she does, I mean, she's the, the way, a, the way it looks like a, she there will. There isn't a person. There uh -huh. isn't a person I can speak about on this on this committee on your committee that doesn't would want not want to help right. her. Right. We know of Mary personally. We know mm -hmm. of her ills. We know of her children. We know of the problems uh. that she's gone through. All and all and all, mm -hmm. we have tried in earnest. Mm -hmm. The public does not realize how many meetings we've had with the family with her daughter, with her son, etc. We've offered alternatives. We've offered time and, and ample opportunity to remedy the situation. On the other side of the coin, we get continuous um, complaints from the re neighbors who bought homes in residential areas and expect and deserve for, for their, for their uh, uh, taxes and for their homes a certain monicum of, of peace, quiet, and tranquility. I mean, I think mm -hmm. you've got to agree. Uh, we tried to remedy that. We looked into, we looked back for years into the uses of the property. We have no issue with the farm stand. Mm -hmm. We have no issue at all mm -hmm. with the farm stand. We tried to remedy some of the situations where she had variances to store equipment in her garages. That's fine. She mm -hmm. got to prove variances to put equipment away, place them in her garages, etc. Did not do that. Mm -hmm. Not only did not do that, but I'm, I don't want to get into the, the aspects of the case. It's not our prerogative to get into the aspects of the case. But what, what progressed was exactly what was said in the notification that I had was additional uses in a residential zone. That's the issue. And mm -hmm. if she could, before the court, show that she was justified in those uses, we wouldn't be talking. We wouldn't be talking. So I, I have, I, have uh, I, I don't know how else or what prerogative we have. Yeah, I, I would just like ask that maybe if we could how can we, how can I don't we, know. Maybe how would you suggest, let me, let me turn it around, and I understand Bob's emotional issue with mm -hmm. this as well. How do you suggest we, as a township committee, act to help both Mary and the neighbors in the, in the, in the her neighbors on Slattery? Give us, give us a direction. I don't know if it's legally within your purview to try to help her with the, um, the fines or to... You know, if it's an illegal use, then perhaps she could come before the Board of Adjustment. Maybe she should have done that in the first place, come before the Board of Adjustment for uh, a legal that use. That was a very bona fide suggestion. But at this particular point, when things have gone so far, and it seems like there was, um, well, not a real, I don't want to say animosity, but there was a, a problem in dealing no, with the two no. sides. These years. Now it's kind of like the case is, Settled, but it's it's just a real shame that it, it went in that direction. Mayor. Yes, Fred. Yeah, I, I I just would like to explain. You know, I know you said tragic case, but it's really unfortunate for the township because what happened was I want to give you an example as mm -hmm. a former township committee member. Sure. On a number of of occasions, I was asked to meet with the construction and the zoning officials, and you know with the history that there's been a number of times over the past few years where mm -hmm. the zoning officer came forward and said, you know, we have a problem here. Mm -hmm. And what happened was the property owners came before the township committee, the unfortunate circumstances or whatever it was led to the township committee to say, all right, we're going to give you more time. And, you know, but please let's see if we can get some positive things to happen. Nothing happened, mm -hmm. but that's not the end of the story. Fast forward to maybe about a year ago, we said we really have to do something because, you know, I'm, you know, you know what it's like if there's residents that are saying that something's not right. It's got to be addressed. Mm -hmm. So what happened was we had a mayor, a meeting rather, at the direction of the governing body with all of the tenants at the property. Now, that doesn't normally happen, but we thought okay, if the property owner really can't do something about this, let's bring in all of the tenants because they must be doing pretty well. So they could come forward. They have the wherewithal. They're the ones on the property that probably shouldn't be on the property. 
We didn't judge them at that point mm -hmm. in time. And what we said to the tenants, and there was a number of commercial uses going on, as we all know, and we said, can you start cleaning this up? Can you start to move it to one side of the property? Can we start to limit the intensity of your use? We didn't say we're going to issue a violation. We didn't say anything. We said, can you please start to make those strides? Move the equipment off the line. You know, Transfer the equipment to another area of the property. Mm -hmm. Bring the equipment into the garage. I can go through a whole, I'm and sorry. No, and the mayor mm -hmm. said, look, at that meeting, you know, it's better than the alternative. And the alternative is what, what's happened here. But, you know, look, if you really want to rally around your, your property owner, mm -hmm. please do that. We sent the property, um, the zoning officer back out, and again, nothing really happened. So then, but then, then wait, I want, I want to tell okay. you. Uh, on top of that, we also sent the zoning officer out, and this is with the backdrop of what we see now of really violations going on on the site. And we said, okay, why don't you go out to the zoning officer and why don't you identify to the property owner, you, you know, see if you can make a list of some things that could at least provide for some immediate improvements to the site and less intensity and less um, hours of operation, you know, things of that nature. So the list was made and the zoning officer came back and now this is really the third or fourth time that we had said to the zoning officer, see, see what you can do. I know you have these potential violations. So the zoning officer went out and made this punch list and said, basically, I really hope, so. we all hoped that something would happen. And again, nothing happened. Mm. Then fast forward, it came to the point where the governing body had no alternative left but to say, okay, this entity didn't issue the violations. That's within the purview of the zoning officer. And we said, look, we don't think we can come up with any type of settlement. So um, the zoning officer came back, and we talked with <clears throat> the attorney to try to come up with a settlement. And <clears throat> But there was nothing formidable that was ever presented that we could that we could try to work with. And I want to say that even when we talked about the settlement, the zoning officer and the construction official said it's going to be difficult to effectuate this type of settlement, and the governing body said, we'll try to figure that out. But there was no effort made by the property owner again. So then what happened was the summonses were issued, because that's the, re the zoning officer has to answer to everybody <coughs> in town. Summonses were issued, and then during the case, there was times where, again, <coughs> through the the prosecutor of the township contacted the administration to say, can we still try to figure this out and work this out? And proposals were made and proposals were not accepted to try to remedy this and resolve it, even at that point, after all of those steps. So I don't think, you know, it's, it's necessarily tragic just for the property owner. It's not really fair to the township if anybody thinks that the township's been unfair because I can say you know, affirmatively, that this township has made every effort to try to, you know, you know, accommodate the circumstances there, and there was just no take to try to say, look, we're going to work with you, we're going to try to do this. And in the meantime, residents were saying, I'm impacted by this. How come this is going on so long? So at some point, you have to balance this, and you have to say to your zoning officer and everyone else, you have to do what what's you have to go forward you we, we can't wait anymore mm -hmm. we're talking years so mm -hmm. i just think it's important that that's part of the record mm -hmm. for this governing body it's not this entity it's not anyone trying to give someone a hard time it's a result of after a long period of time to try to answer to all the residents that there's a condition that needs to be addressed and clearly in the judge's decision <clears throat> There's a lot I, of issues. Well, well, I think there's a lot of confusion because it seems like two things are going on here, property violations and certainly, uh, certainly if someone has a property violation in town and doesn't address that, you know, the fine is justified a in any circumstances. I mean, you have to rectify what's on your property. Mm -hmm. But then it came into the play, is it an, is it a... Uh, an acceptable use on that property, an allowable use or not. Now that got thrown into the fray, and after 70 years of the town saying just clean up and you can stay there, and not saying, you know, you, guess what, you have an, uh, uh, um, what is it, non conforming use on the property, they never said that. The town almost like 
you know, went along with it if you just keep your property but okay. It's, but it's, but now know, it comes to know, court and they say that it's not a, a use. You know what we're guilty of, and you were on this committee, and you know the mm -hmm. philosophy of the committee. We're, we're guilty of trying to be a community and leave, leave things alone. John Farmoski used an expression to me once, we like to leave the genie in the bottle. Okay? Genie. It means that, yeah, we, we know where the violations are. We know where the issues are. We know where the, where the everything from the, the improper curb cuts to the, to the improper mm. parking on different surfaces. To, I mean, we can go on and on and on. Do we want to prosecute and, and, and chase every single one? No. Do we, did we want to even prosecute Mary as a thief? No. You know, but, uh, but the trouble, the, the problem comes in elected office, the responsibility here when brought to your attention and you ignore it, the word's called malfeasance. Malfeasance. You're not doing your job, and if you're not doing the job, then the other party has the right to sue, not only for, for their rights, sue us. Now, I'm, I'm, does that intimidate me? No, it doesn't intimidate me. But we tried in earnest everything, Bob, we could do to get this thing rectified. We offered viable alternatives to leave away. Look, let's be honest. It's economic, too. Mary has a, a, mm -hmm. a revenue stream that's critical to her. Mm -hmm. and, and the idea of her being fine the way she did, look, I, I can't. I can't comment. Do I find it difficult? If it, if it was something, yeah, I find it very difficult. But, but uh, uh, the basis for, for the fines that she had and how the court arrived at those, that's the court. We don't involve ourselves with the court. Mm -hmm. You give me some suggestion for this township committee to help Mary, I'll run 110% with it. You know, But I, I don't know what else we can possibly do that we haven't already tried to do that we haven't, we, we brought her together with all of our different agencies within the township with her family to try and remedy this. Hmm. And here we are, yeah. and here we are. We're the bad guys. We're the bad guys. Well, you know? I, I, no, I wouldn't say that, and I don't think that the town is saying that either. It's just that. Uh, um... I, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to forward you my emails. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, but, but it's just um, the, the and, court and, ruled that and, it and was as, not as, a, a as, useful. As Tom Gallagher once said, well, well, Francioli, you're the chairman, so you're the lightning rod. But boy, I'll tell you, I'm sure getting enough shocks. But it, it's, <laughs> from, from um, the, uh, the did community. the courts actually rule that it was an, an unacceptable use of the property or just that she had yeah, I can, violations? I have a copy of the opinion I can, okay. I can give to you. Because, because it, in fairness, I don't. I, I, one, I think it's good there's discussion about addressing the efforts that were made. Mm -hmm. The case itself, that's for no one here, you know, about the, the findings. But I have it. If you'd like to see a copy, Judy, mm -hmm. I can give you a copy of it. But I, but to, to go over the merits of it, it's, it's quite a lengthy decision. And, you, you mm -hmm. know, you can always give me a call if you have a question. But so, so would she still be allowed to come before the planning board or the board of adjustment for a... Um, a use variance, um, kind of. I, when I heard the, first heard the case, I kind of heard thought you mean, you mean grandfather after, right away. And, uh, I, 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 that's I why everybody after the fact. Well, most of the people in town thought grandfathered. We, She's been doing it seventy years. It's we grandfather, so we were shocked when it wasn't. Yeah. It's very. I really don't want to say anything because okay. there's various legal options available. Okay. You know, okay, and I don't want to say oh, okay. like the wrong yeah, okay. thing and then right. have okay. somebody leave, oh, we could make an application or something. But, right, okay. You know, they, okay. You know. Well, thank you. And if there's certainly anything um, you could do, thinking out of the box, I don't know what it could be, but um, it would be, I'm sure it would be most appreciated. Thank you. Fred, if there's anything in, in, this, in these conversations that you feel uh, brings to our attention any prerogatives after the court that the township committee may have, would mm -hmm. you brief us? Sure. So, sure. So, you know, I'm, yeah. we're more than willing to do whatever we can do without any direct interference with the court. Right. And that's it. Robert, Judge O'Toole, you, you after... At, you want to yell at me some more? I'm what? sorry? Are you going to yell at me some more? No, no. I, and I, I, I apologize. I'm sorry. It just, okay. It's just... These these things that drive, we're, we're, they drive all, me. I'm sure they drive you up emotional. emotional. We're now, all frustrated. We're all part of right. this family and okay. this community. You Judge know, O'Toole, not... we talked to him after the case was over out in the hallway. He said she still is allowed to operate a landscaping business and a f 
farming business there because that predates the that she is allowed to run. Well, the farm stand. And the farm stand there, yeah. yes. But uh, on that, where those garages are, she is allowed to run a landscaping business and a farming business. Will the township work with her to find a way for her to function there as that use, and and not and and still be able to exist there if she can do if that's still legal? He said it is. If that if 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 that Fred. What Bob is saying, is, mm, is that right. your understanding in, the, in the Judge O'Toole's? Yeah, I is, think is the opinion speaks for itself, but I think that there is, you know, I don't want to say in definite terms, but that generally is, is my understanding, you, you know, based on the decision. You know, if that what Mr. Steiger just said and what, what he's saying from the judge, but, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to dictate anything from the decision, but yeah. there are certain activities that are still permitted on that site. It's, there's just a number of activities that are not that have been ongoing. If, if she is being, if, if Bob, if it's found that she's being denied any rights that Judge O'Toole gave her through that decision, we well, will but, intervene. Okay, but wouldn't it be, if we could talk to her and she could get with the right people, how she could run a landscaping business or a farming business there and be fit in with the code. We know she can't park tractor trailer trucks and things. I understand that. But then maybe the town would have to kind of help her. How should a landscaping business be put on that property and have it work? Well, I think that the decision is only three days old. You know, I think we all are familiar with her attorney, Mr. Burns. Yes. I'm sure he will give her excellent legal guidance as to what her options are based on the court's decision. I, I don't want to say anything, especially in a public record, that would be misleading based no, I, on the I court's decision. I can appreciate decision. I understand you know, that. I, I'm just saying, uh, we, maybe we caught him at a weak moment, I'll be honest with you, but he did say, as far as he was concerned, anything that was taking place there before uh, 1946 should be allowed to take place there again. Grandfather. Okay. Grandfather. Yep. Okay. Yeah, no, right, no, then but, but fairness, maybe there is hope that w yeah. maybe we've we got to sit down with her and tell her what she has to do to put to put up business there that does not mess up Slattery Court because that's the only people in this you whole know, town that are worried I, I, about it. Fred, Fred's going to scream at me. <laughs> no, no, don't. Say, Fred's going to scream at me now. No. Bob, if she operated in reasonable hours, not. Six. I, I, six go, I know. I, if a guy starts a mower in our yard at six and, in the morning, and, and, I'd scream at him too. And maintain some some civility to okay, to right. the site. Okay. We wouldn't be talking. I got you. I I thank you. I apologize for. I do get emotional, and I'm sorry about and that. And me too, because I do Very too. I, I I said to this town, you know, it, 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 to, to try and sum it up. Um, I, I said to this to well, having a conference down there. My bedtime. Okay. <laughs> the, um, in addressing the township committee in, in conference session, uh, I know that this case has the potential to go further. Um, transcripts are being requested, and that's, by the way, the uh, defendant's prerogative. Um, money is being spent. I think that's terrible. Um, it just adds insult to injury that additional dollars have to be spent on this case. I just expressed my opinion to this township committee on the, on the whole matter and I thought that uh, uh, there were, might be other, and I don't know the answer, Judy, amicable ways to resolve it at this juncture, uh, but the court has decided and um, the separation of them and us, as you know, exists. And if we get, got involved with that, and um, you know, it, it brings on another whole set of issues. There was a point where some of my committeemen were getting a great deal of outside influence that was crossing the line, even on the court. And um, I had to go very carefully in some of these areas, you know. But having said that, Madam. Good evening, Linda Lang. Parker Avenue, a Cedar Knowles resident. 
I have nothing to do with the uh, Slattery Court. If you don't want to talk about the farm stand? <laughs> no, oh. I, don't, I don't have enough information on it. I'd be <laughs> talking off the top of my head. Uh, I'm here because um, for the Pilgrim Pipeline, I'm not going to take up much of your time. We would sent out information. I'm wondering if there's anything that you'd like to say or if you had a chance to read any of the materials that were sent to you and if you have any thoughts. The administrator has reached out to Congressman Freelandheisen. Joe, I think you did on this matter and you want to comment? Well, we, we contacted PSC&G because we heard that the possible route would be under the transmission lines. Right. And uh, based on the information they have, there is no set pipeline rule, route yet. Right. And in fact, there was a very large article in the Star Ledger last week. And I saw statements it. made by the Pilgrim Pipeline people that they're still in the process of making a determination. So at this point, the township has not received any formal notification from Pilgrim Pipeline. So I think we have to take a wait and see position until we get some kind of notification. Okay. I'd also like to invite you, and I'll leave this with you. There will be another um, talk. It'll be at the Morris County Library about the Pilgrim Pipeline by the coalition that is against the Pilgrim Pipeline. And ju just to be clear, while, while we're more than uh, interested in knowing more about the pipeline, and I had mentioned it to you earlier too, you know, th there are constituencies on both sides of these matters. And while we fully appreciate your, you know, wanting to uh, resist this pipeline, um, you know, there, there may be members of, uh, of the community and in, in a public forum that support it. Or, you know, we, so, I mean, that's, you know, so we'll have to learn more about it. Good. Is that fair? That's good. <laughs> okay, all right. Good night. All right, thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else in uh, attendance that would like to be heard at this time? Move to close. Second. Nothing? Nothing? <laughs> no? Sure. All right, moved. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. Right, okay. Ladies and Mr. gentlemen, Mr. as we continue with the agenda, we have the approval of the Township <laughs> Committee minutes of August 14th. May we have a motion for approval? So moved. Second. So moved by Mr. Farmaska, seconded by Mr. Coppola. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So approved. Ladies and gentlemen, we have received three, actually two letters of retirement, DPW truck driver equipment operator John Sessock announcing his retirement as of October 31st, and our part-time park maintenance worker Bob Peters is retiring effective December 17th, and of course the latest resignation from Dr. John Graber who uh, is relocating out of town, uh, made his resignation from the Board of Health effective September the 5th. So as uh, we are required to do by policy, uh, may we have a motion from the Township Committee so to accept second. the letters of retirement and resignation. We have a motion by Mr. Faramaska, seconded by Mr. Gallagher. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So approved. We have next, ladies and gentlemen, uh, departmental reports, and they include the report of the township's chief municipal finance officer on the summary of budget revenues as of the 31st of August. We have the progress report from the township's human resource specialist. Uh, the township engineer has submitted his capital project status report as of today. The construction official has submitted his report on the issuance of all building permits and certificates of occupancy during the month of uh, August. Superintendent of Public Works, mm -hmm. Buildings and Grounds and Park Maintenance has submitted his report on the activities of the Road Division, sanita Sanitation Division, and the Park Maintenance Division. And finally, we have the report of the Chief of Police on all the activities of the Police Department during the month of August. Ladies and gentlemen, as we continue with the agenda, we have one ordinance for public hearing and consideration on adoption. It's docketed as ordinance number 37-14. 
It amends and supplements ordinance number 14-2014 by appropriating an additional sum of $37,000 from the Swimming Pool Enterprise Fund capital account for 2014 and all prior years for the financing of the expansion of the recreation area at the B-Meadow Pool to, to include a half basketball court, four square courts, and a tether ball court. We have proof of publication that the ordinance and the notice of introduction <coughs> appeared in full in the August 21st issue of the Daily Record. At this time, may we have a motion to convene the public hearing. So moved by Mr. Fr uh, Mr. Capoa. Second. Second by Mr. Gallagher on roll call for public hearing. Mr. Gallagher. Aye. Mr. Fermas. Aye. Mr. Capola. Yeah. And yes. Mr. Francioli. Aye. Is there anyone present wishing to comment on the ordinance? Seeing none, hearing none, may we have a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. So moved second. by Mr. Fermasca, seconded by Mr. Gallagher. On roll call, Mr. Gallagher. Aye. Mr. Fermasca. Aye. Mr. Capola. Aye. And Mr. Francioli. Aye. Now on adoption, be it resolved that an ordinance entitled an ordinance of the Township Committee amending and supplementing ordinance number 14-2014 by appropriating an additional sum of $37,000 from the Swimming Pool Enterprise Fund capital account for 2014 and all prior years for the financing of the expansion of the recreation area at the B Meadow Pool to include a half court basketball court, three four square courts, and a tether ball court be passed on final reading and that a notice of the final passage of the ordinance be published in the September 18th issue of the Daily Record. May we now have a motion on adoption. So moved. So moved by Mr. Capola. Second. Second by Mr. Francioli. On roll call for adoption. Mr. Gallagher. Aye. Mr. Faramas. Aye. Mr. Capola. Aye. And Mr. Francioli. Aye. So adopted. Thank you. I, I'm, I'm just worried about the resolution. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have two ordinances for introduction this evening. Uh, the next ordinance is uh, docketed as ordinance number 38-14. It's an ordinance of the Township Committee amending and supplementing Chapter 166 of the Code entitled Land Use and Development Legislation by amending and supplementing various provisions concerning fences and walls. The ordinance will be further considered for public hearing and final passage at the October 9th meeting of the governing body. At that time, any person wishing to be heard will be given the opportunity to speak. The ordinance and the notice of introduction will be published in full in the September 18th issue of the Daily Record. And pursuant to the municipal land use law, the ordinance will be forwarded to the planning board for review and recommendation to the township committee. So at this point, may we have a motion for introduction? So moved. So moved by Mr. Capola. Second. Second by Mr. Uh, Gallagher and Mr. Francioli. On roll call for introduction. Mr. Gallagher. Aye. Mr. Fermasca. Aye. Mr. Capola. Aye. And Mr. Francioli. Aye. So introduced. And ladies and gentlemen, the second ordinance for introduction this evening <coughs> is docketed as ordinance number 39-14. This too is an ordinance uh, to amend and supplement the land use and development legislation by amending the permitted uses in the IB zone district. And the amendment is as follows for the record. Section 166-203.8 prohibited uses would read as follows. Section K, the serving of alcoholic beverages for consumption on the premises unless as an accessory to an eating and or drinking establishment that is a separate use and A, is located in a separate building from any other businesses established on the same premises, or B, is separated from any other business establishment on the same premises by a continuous wall that does not allow access between such business establishments. 
That is the uh, amendment to ordinance number 39-14. Here again is the land use uh, ordinance. It will be published in the daily record in the uh, September 18th issue. Public hearing is scheduled for the 9th of October at 8.30 p.m. And at that time, any person wishing to be heard in these chambers will be given the opportunity to be heard. And once again, in accordance with the municipal land use law, the ordinance will be forwarded to the planning board for a review and recommendation as required by law. Now, ladies and gentlemen, on uh, pages two and three, we have a very lengthy consent agenda of resolutions. I would ask the Township Committee if you have any questions about any of the resolutions. There are no additional resolutions to be added, um, but please ask if you have a question. Move to be approved. We have a motion by Mr. Second. Cole, second by Mr. Um, Faramaska on uh, adoption of the consent agenda. On adoption, Mr. Gallagher. Aye. Mr. Faramaska. Aye. Mr. Coppola. Aye. And Mr. Francioli. Aye. Thank you. Township Committee, and as we uh, move on, we have raffle applications which appear on the bottom of page 12. I'm sorry, uh, the page three and four. And uh, is there anyone wishing to abstain from any of the? <clears throat> Obviously, yes. I yes. Do. Elizabeth Ann Seaton Council, uh, the night off-premise raffle. Thank you, Mr. Coppola. We'll so note the record <clears throat> that Mr. Coppola will abstain from voting on raffle application 2774, Elizabeth Ann Seaton Se <clears throat> Council. 6904, Knights of Columbus, as he is a distinguished member of that august body. So and we have a motion for so approval. Moved. We have a motion second by Mr. Gallagher, motion by Mr. Faramaska. On roll call, Mr. Gallagher. Aye. Mr. Faramaska. Aye. Mr. Capola. Aye. With the exception of 2774 and Mr. Francio. Aye. Now payment of bills, $5,100,970.84. So the chief municipal finance officer does not have to go to jail. Pay those <coughs> bills. Pay those bills. We pay those that's bills. A, that's, that's a tidy amount. We have a motion. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So approved. We save Mr. Esposito. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, that clears the agenda of the Business Administrative Township Clerk, and I thank you very much. Thank you, Joe. And I'll take a sip of water. Very good. Yeah, there you go. Have a glass of water. Um, before I turn it back over to the Township Committee, and then I'm going to open the meeting again to the floor, uh, I, I would like to say on behalf of the Township Committee uh, how uh, uh, much we appreciated all of the work done for Hanover Township Day this past Saturday. Um, all of us who attended uh, saw that it was a very, very huge success. And uh, uh, I think Denise Brennan, our, our Superintendent of uh, uh, Recreation, uh, as well as Brian Ferran on Public Works, uh, Jim Coyley, all members of the Recreation Commission who put in months and months of time putting that together. Uh, I think they cover just about every base. I want to thank uh, our fire companies, both uh, Whippany and Cedar Knowles, for their presentations being there. Uh, the kids had a wonderful time in the paddle boats. There was so much for everybody to do there. Uh, representation from all of our departments, our VFWs, our, our uh, Veterans Alliance, etc., who uh, had booth there and our library, etc. A wonderful day was had by all. I know Bob Bruno, if he was here, would, would proclaim the same thing, that uh, he enjoyed uh, the day and all of the work that was done. So we, we thank them all. If I missed anybody, I apologize, but, uh, you know, we're looking forward to next year. Come on, so. just so uh, we can go back, so we'll take a formal action on 39-14. Yeah. I may have forgotten to ask for a motion for introduction. I'll move that. We have I'll a motion second. by Mr. Fermaska, second. seconded by Mr. Coppola, and that's on land use ordinance 39-14. We have a motion and second on roll call, Mr. Gallagher. Aye. Mr. Fermaska. Aye. Mr. Coppola. Aye. And Mr. Francioli. Aye. Thank you. Just so we make it formal. There you go. There you go. Before we ink it. Okay. All right, on that note, uh, is there any other business from the Township Committee before I open the floor? Sure. George? Yeah, uh, first of all, landmarks seem to be moving pretty well with the uh, completion of the first phase of the burial yards. 
Uh, we do have a meeting next Thursday since we've been off the whole summer. We will get an update and bring it to the township committee. Secondly, the fire companies, I've gone to both the commissioners' meetings in the last several months, and I, my first question is, how are they doing with the um, police academy dispatching? And in each case, I've got they're very pleased with it. Uh, and it's working because they knew if there were bugs, they would have some issues here and there. But they've worked through them, and they're really very satisfied with it. So they're doing, they're, they're, doing a, they're doing a fantastic Maybe job. Maybe one day we'll get the police, too. But for now, um, yeah. you want that? You want that? That's great. That's great Thank news. You, George. That's it. And by the way, second the motion on the on the academy. Uh, I hope none of you uh, have to have an opportunity to make that call. Uh, but it came out of my house, and I, I have to tell you the response uh, from the county to our locals to my home was seamless and instantaneous. And I, I think uh, I think that's uh, going to work out very very well. And we also had a new police officer started, yeah. and he will be sworn in at the next township committee meeting. We, he, we swore him in on September yep. 2nd, but he will get an official swearing in. Well, it was official. He'll be getting a swearing in in public with his family uh, in, our, in the second meeting of this month. Good. Okay. Uh, Deputy Mayor Faramoska reminds me of something, and I don't want to treat it lightly. We have been working diligently with uh, State Senator Cody and his office uh, and down at the DEP for about over a year now uh, to acquire the Route 24 right-of-way, which goes from Ridgedale Avenue up to Morris Plains, uh, and uh, that would have been the extension of Route 24, which we all know uh, wasn't coming to fruition. And the township had petitioned uh, the state to give that property up, and um, my phone rang this morning, and uh, Senator Cody advises me that the governor has signed the delegislation legislation. So that property now uh, is uh, set up for formally to come to Hanover Township as open space. So Big news. We're, we're very happy. We compliments to the senator and uh, all involved and all worked hard to be part of the trail. Good news. Great news. Good. Great news. <clears throat> John? Yeah. Um, Engineering department continues to be very hard at work. They are working on 25 active projects uh, this year, capital projects, major ones. Um, I'll just hit on the, the major roadway improvements that have occurred or will be occurring within the next two weeks. So the resurfacing of Eden Lane from Whippany Road to the Easterly Terminus, that's scheduled to start September the 20th. Resurfacing of Smithfield Drive, uh, that's scheduled to start September 29th. Resurfacing of Apple Tree Lane, that's scheduled to start September 22nd. And you probably have already noticed this, but uh, Hanover Township has innovated and moved to what we call full trench repair. So that if there's a disturbance by a uh, outside um, utility of our roadway, um, rather than just patch or do 18 inches on either side of the disturbance, they're now doing full lane restoration. So we're the benefit of full lane restoration on South Jefferson Road that took place on H22 completion, uh, Park Avenue, uh, which was a redo uh, that was completed on 818, and the trench repair as well of Pleasant Valley Way and Knollwood um, Road. Uh, lastly, as well as importantly, uh, and this is for Brian Ferran and DPW, who have waited a while on this, we're happy to say the DPW parking lot has been resurfaced um, so, so the operators at that <coughs> facility can work on a much safer uh, area. That concludes my report. No, John, that's very good. Uh, John's not taking a bow, but I'm going to give a bow because the the uh, effort to get the utility companies to do the complete lanes after they do trench openings was something that John spearheaded. He pulled the water company in, for example, uh, at a special meeting and uh, advised them that we weren't going to accept the trenches the way they were on Jefferson Road. So thanks, John, for all uh, the effort in that regard. Any, okay, uh, Tom? I get a couple. Yeah. Thanks. 
As we all know, Tuesday, September 4th, our schools began the 2014 and 15 school year. Good luck to everyone. We hope you have a great year. As many of our families have noticed, there's quite, been quite a bit of uh, improvements around our school regarding safety and traffic awareness. The school, I'm proud to announce the School and Park Traffic Safety Advisory Committee completed most of its improvements that we set out to do over the summer and to be completed by the first day of school. There are too many people to thank for their hard work on this initiative, but I would like to thank them all, but I can't for time's sake. So I just want to mention the big groups. Thank you to the Hanover Township Police Department, our superintendent of schools, our building principals, our PTAs, and our school board members. The Hanover Township Engineering Department, the Hanover Township DPW, Hanover Township's own Trans Options. I also want to thank many Hanover Township residents that have responded to our surveys, called us, and emailed us, and also attended our public hearing. Last but not least, I would like to thank the Hanover Township Committee. I've said this many times, but our subcommittee actually has three additional members on it. Mayor Ron Francioli, Deputy Mayor John Faramaska, and Committeeman Bob Bruno. This is a very important initiative to all of us, our children's safety, and we are always updating and helping one another to further ensure the safety of our families. Thank you very much, guys. I took a tour of all the schools also. I got a lot of phone calls, a lot of emails, and people are very happy about the way we handled this, and it was a big group effort, and again, thank you, guys. Wonderful. It's working out very, very well for the safety of the kids. I see you have a, a walking Friday coming up. Is that That's what? coming up. Yep. As part of our educational... Imagine, imagine walking to school. <laughs> Who would have thought? Well, go ahead. As part of our educational and awareness portion of this program, we will be handing out 15 flyers, 1,500 flyers to all our K-8 students in Hanover Township. It'll all, they'll all be handed out at back to school night. It explains who we are, what our objectives are, and give a few st statistics. And it also concludes with some driving and walking suggestions, safety suggestions. Now, tomorrow we begin the walking school bus. We got introduced to this through Trans Options. It's safe routes to schools. Our Environmental Commission and Green Team also benefit from this. At three of our elementary schools, we have walking routes, we have walking school bus bus stops, one's on my front lawn. And uh, we're gonna be walking to school and we're also gonna be discussing safe bicycling to school. So we're very happy about that and it's a nice initiative happening in Hanover Township. I just have two more quick ones. Next Friday, Hanover Youth Nights will be held at Hanover Township's own mixed martial arts right here in Pine Plaza. It will be held for third to fifth grade. We will have a special hands-on self-defense and mixed martial arts seminar, followed by refreshments from Uncle Vinny's Pizza and Planet Swirl. We are then going to book a day. Well, count me in. Planet Swirl. <laughs> I, I, Planet, Swirl. Planet Swirl is involved in our program, and oh. as I announced before, American Martial Arts is now part of our Substance Awareness Council here in Hanover Township. Yeah, that's great. Last, last two. The One Day One School team had its first meeting to discuss this year's fall program. The main event will be Saturday, October 18th at the East Hanover Middle School. We will also be working simultaneously in Hanover Township Schools to complete additional ongoing One Day One School projects. One from the green team, we're going to have, Hanover Township is having a free tree giveaway. If you go on a website, you can apply to be awarded a tree. I believe it goes to the first hundred people that apply. We've got to increase that. From a hundred? Yeah, we really do. We really do. We've got to increase that. We, we, I think it goes fast at a hundred, but uh, we'll, th we'll talk about it. I've yeah. heard that the people that get the trees actually say they're pretty good trees, too. I, I have one, and it's doing thriving, it's doing beautifully. We'll, we'll yeah, talk about increasing that. You know? And the last one, Employment Horizons Paper Shred Day is going to be Saturday, October 11th. 2014, 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. That's everything, Mayor. Thank you. Very good. To that? George, go ahead. Yeah, I'd just like to add uh, a point on one day, one school, and the school zone safety committee. Uh, Committeeman Gallagher uh, got me involved with doing the minutes, and if anybody would like to get a copy of some very extensive minutes of these meetings, just let me know or let Mr. Giorgio know and we'll definitely get you a copy to show you all that's been going on. Are you sure you did those? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Phyllis. He did them? He did. 
They don't stop talking. I can't help they, they, they were pretty good. I told you it's got to be the new squad. They were pretty good. But anyway, if anybody wants them, just let Mr. George will know, and we'll get you a copy of them. Good. Right, Ace Conley into the secretary. Did a good job. Very nice. Okay, uh, gentlemen, at this time I'd like to reopen the floor. So moved. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the floor is open. I'd like to address the Township Committee at this time. Once again, you may do so from the podium, giving us your name and address for the record. Motion. Seeing none. Motion once. to close. Seeing none twice. Oh, motion to close. Aye. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion for adjourn. So moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Adjourn. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Very good. Good job. Good job. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah.